What's up, guys? Wait a minute. You guys aren't the real Avengers. I can tell Hulk gives it away. There are so many perfect villains that still haven't made it to live action. Could we finally see them in Tom Holland's Spider-Man 4? Plus, there's a theory that Venom 3 and Spider-Man 4 might be setting up Avengers 6 in a big way. So let's dive into everything we know about the upcoming Spider-Man 4. According to a new Marvel theory, Venom The Last Dance might connect to the MCU's Spider-Man 4, potentially setting up Peter Parker's role in Avengers Secret Wars. Fans have been wondering about Tom Holland's Spider-Man return since Spider-Man No Way Home. Although his Homecoming trilogy is wrapped up, it seems like a new chapter in his MCU journey is just beginning. We've got confirmation that Spider-Man 4 is in the works, with Destin Daniel Cretton of Shang-Chi directing and Holland reprising his role as the Web Slinger. The story details are still unknown, but there's a lot of speculation. While Kevin Feige has mentioned Spider-Man will focus more on street-level heroics, there are rumors Sony wants to keep the multiverse theme going. Venom Let There Be Carnage hinted at a crossover between Holland's Spider-Man and Tom Hardy's Venom, but nothing concrete has come from that yet. The theory suggests that Venom 3 might finally bring about this crossover, impacting Spider-Man's story before Avengers 6. The latest trailer for Venom The Last Dance gives us a peek at an army of symbiotes heading to Earth, but there's an even scarier threat behind them. We catch a brief look at Null, the dark deity who created Venom and the other symbiotes. Introduced in 2018, Null is a godlike being who was banished to the Void by the Celestials after killing one of their own. In the comics, he's also the creator of the Necro Sword, which Gore the God Butcher used in Thor Love and Thunder. Null found that he could control other beings by bonding with them, which led to the creation of the symbiotes. These symbiotes are connected by a hive mind centered around Null. It's clear that Null is going to be the most formidable foe Eddie and Venom have faced, and they'll likely need some serious backup to take him on. With Spider-Man not currently in their universe, they might have to seek help from other dimensions they've visited. Rumors are swirling that Spider-Man 4 might dive into the multiverse and feature a crossover with Tom Hardy's Venom. A theory on Reddit by user Charles Petrescu suggests that Venom The Last Dance ends with Eddie Brock traveling to Earth-616, seeking help from MCU heroes to face Null. When he arrives in New York, Spider-Man meets Eddie, who warns him about the looming threat of Null. Spider-Man agrees to team up, but Null proves too powerful for him alone. In the climactic battle, Eddie makes a sacrifice so Peter can bond with Venom, boosting Spider-Man's strength. They manage to push Null back into the void, but don't completely defeat him. After the fight, Spider-Man ends up with the black symbiote suit from the 1984 Secret Wars comic cover. This theory fits well with the symbiotic tease in No Way Home, and could be a great way to bridge the MCU with Sony's universe while advancing Peter Parker's story. If this theory turns out to be true, Spider-Man 4 could play a crucial role in preparing Peter Parker for Avengers Secret Wars. The symbiote suit has only been shown once before in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3, but it didn't quite capture the black suit from the Secret Wars storyline. Recreating this iconic look would be a fantastic way to stay true to the source material and give fans something they've been eager to see in live action. It would also integrate Venom into the MCU plot without tying it too tightly to Sony's complex Spider-Man universe. With Venom's boost, Spider-Man would gain the extra edge he needs before facing the powerful heroes and villains of the Marvel multiverse in Secret Wars, including potentially Robert Downey Jr.'s Doctor Doom. This upgrade would be essential for Spider-Man to stand a chance against such formidable opponents. Additionally, Sony has been keen on linking Spider-Man to its roster of villains, making Spider-Man 4 an ideal setting to make these connections. The new report confirms that Spider-Man 4 will begin filming in early 2025, aiming for a release about a year later. With Destin Daniel Cretton, who directed Shang-Chi at the helm, and Chris McKenna and Eric Summers returning as writers, it's a promising setup for the next chapter in Tom Holland's Spider-Man saga. The writing duo has been solid in previous Spider-Man films, 
so we can expect consistency in tone and character development. However, there's always the challenge of keeping things fresh and evolving Peter Parker's journey without rehashing previous plots. Meanwhile, Avengers Doomsday is also scheduled to begin filming in 2025, with Benedict Cumberbatch confirming his involvement. The Russo brothers are returning to direct, which is exciting given their past success with Infinity War and Endgame. However, coordinating the filming schedules for both Spider-Man 4 and Avengers Doomsday could be tricky, especially with Holland likely appearing in both. The advantage here is that both films are deeply connected and if managed well, the shared universe could thrive with a cohesive Spider-Man storyline. On the flip side, a tight schedule could lead to rushed production, and balancing the two projects will require careful planning to avoid potential delays or overlaps. If Marvel Studios and Sony opt for a mix of multiversal adventure and grounded storytelling in Spider-Man 4, the Inheritor, known as Morlin, could be a perfect villain to tie it all together. Morlin is a psychic vampire who can traverse the multiverse, and his goal is to feed on the life forces of spider totems like Peter Parker. This makes him one of the most formidable threats to the Spider-Verse, and his relentless pursuit of Spider-Man through New York could closely mirror his comic book debut. Facing Morlin could also be a key step in connecting the MCU's Spider-Man with Sony's broader Spider-Verse. In the comics, Morlin and his family have a mission to eliminate all spider totems across the multiverse. Introducing Morlin could not only provide a chilling antagonist for Spider-Man, but also pave the way for exploring numerous interconnected Spider-Verse narratives. This approach would not only bring a powerful new villain to the big screen, but also expand Spider-Man's world in exciting ways. Spider-Man No Way Home wrapped up with Peter Parker isolated and forgotten with his identity erased from the memories of everyone, including the Avengers. This leaves him starting over alone in NYC. Despite this setup, Spider-Man is slated to be part of the next Avengers film, so he'll need to find a way to reconnect with the team before Avengers Doomsday hits theaters. Given that Far From Home ended with Peter's identity exposed and No Way Home worked hard to reverse that, it's likely that Spider-Man 4 will focus on resetting Peter's status quo. By the film's end, he'll probably be back with the Avengers and some of his teammates' memories might be restored. 2025 is shaping up to be a massive year for superhero movies, with releases like Superman and the Fantastic Four first steps, but 2026 could be even bigger. The Avengers and Spider-Man films are major highlights of the MCU and their future sequels are sure to generate a lot of buzz. The sooner Spider-Man 4 wraps up, the better chance it has to release before Avengers Doomsday, setting up Spider-Man's next big adventure. And that's that for today's video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. What do you think about the potential villains and storylines for Spider-Man 4 and how they might tie into the larger MCU? Your suggestions for future videos are always welcome in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay in the loop, and if you want, you can share your thoughts about this video in the comments.